Is Zamzam unlimited? There really isn't anything special about the well of Zamzam. Muslims always say that the well is a miracle of Allah. But is it really? If it was unlimited, Saudi Arabia would have converted the desert into an oasis. Not to mention provide clean water for the entire world. Zamzam Studies and Research Center ZRSC, in Saudi Arabia has said and I quote, a threshold water level in the well is maintained. If the water level goes below this level, the pumping is stopped, water level is allowed to recover, and then pumping is resumed. The annual discharge from the well is restricted to around 500,000 meters cubed. However, this limit can be modified if hydrological condition permits. So the water is monitored and refilled by rain. That's right. You're drinking rainwater. The article even goes on to say that in order to manage demand, water from Zamzam well is pumped, treated, and stored in underground storage tanks on a continual basis. So the water is treated. It isn't pure, and it needs to be stored in case of shortage. Electric pumps are used to draw out Zamzam water because it's not overflowing. Every week, water samples are collected from the Zamzam well and the various outlets, including thermoses and water taps in Al-Haram and Sabil Kudai and Kazan outlets. Samples are analyzed for chemical and microbial components. Zamzam water is filtered through a series of sand filters and cartridge filters and then sterilized by ultraviolet irradiation at these treatment plants before distribution to consumers. Al-Haram authority is advised to take action if and when some unexpected adverse component is detected. I guess the holy water has germs in it. But we already know this from the fact that many super spreader events happened in churches and mosques. God might keep the devils away, but he can't keep the germs away. So there you have it. The water isn't distributed in its pure, holy form. It's monitored and goes through various filtering and testing before it's distributed. There's nothing miraculous about this. It's just science. Nathan Halverson published an interesting article where he has explained that the reason why Zamzam hasn't dried up is because Saudi Arabia has an ancient aquifer beneath it. Glacial water from the last ice age trapped under the sand thanks to quirks in its geology. This aquifer has made it possible for Saudi to become the world's sixth largest producer of wheat. It's possible that the Zamzam is fed by this aquifer, which some estimates put it as big as Lake Erie. But the aquifer water is being drawn down so fast that it is drying up, hence the controls on Zamzam. But the bounty didn't last. Today, Saudi Arabia's agriculture is collapsing. It's almost out of water. The government announced next year's wheat harvest will be the country's last. The Saudis are drinking desalinated water from the ocean, a process too expensive to irrigate farmland. Agricultural production is in freefall. The country has less than half the farmland it did in the 1990s. Another funny thing about Zamzam is if you make a prayer to Allah before drinking Zamzam, Allah will grant you your wish. So the hadith goes, the water of Zamzam is for whatever purpose it is drunk for. So, O oh Allah, I am drinking it to quench my thirst on the day of resurrection. So you can drink it for whatever purpose and your wish will be granted? I'm sure a lot of Muslims, including me, have prayed for something before drinking Zamzam and their wish was still not granted. What do you make of that? Did they drink the Zamzam water wrong? And for your info, based on scientific researches, Whatever water is added to Zamzam water gains the qualities of Zamzam water. Subhanallah. What is so miraculous about that? If you mix most liquids together, they gain some quality from the other. Mix milk and water and the water gets cloudy. This isn't unique to Zamzam water only. The Zamzam scandal in the UK. In October 2005, the British Food Standards Agency issued warnings against what they claimed was fraudulent Zamzam water being sold in different areas of UK that contained dangerous levels of arsenic. Muslim leaders are the ones who reported this issue to the agency, so I feel like maybe they made up the fake Zamzam part. Because a few years later, in 2011, BBC reported that the Zamzam water was being illegally sold to Muslims in some area of London and Lutton had high levels of arsenic. The water is poisonous, particularly because of the high levels of arsenic, which is a carcinogen, said Dr. Duncan Campbell, president of the Association of Public Analysts. Coincidence? 
A few days later, the Saudi Arabian embassy in London has said there is no arsenic in Zamzam water and that the water was tested in March of that year and it was found fit for drinking. Dr. Yunus, who is an environmental health officer, has said it is a sensitive matter because Muslims see this as holy water, so they find it hard to believe that it's not safe. He also added that the authorities in Saudi Arabia or in the UK must take some action to protect people. The problem is that this just didn't happen twice. It happened in 2010 and in 2007 also. BBC reported it was fake Zamzam water with a high level of arsenic. Now, to be clear, there's no solid evidence. Maybe the Zamzam water that was being illegally sold in the UK with high levels of arsenic was not really from Makkah, or maybe it was. But the point is when we start treating water as magical, people are going to take advantage and scam others. Thanks for watching. I don't think there's any good reasons to be a Muslim in today's world. I think you'd be better off without a religion. Thank you to my patrons who continue to support my work. Thank you to everyone who has sent me PayPal donations. Thank you to everyone who has shared and liked my videos and continues to support me in other ways. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.